Hello, hello. Just need to quickly make sure everything is working. I think everything should be working. Hello, hello. Yep, it seems like it is. This is good. Let's go. Um, am I missing anything? Music. Yes, that is what I am missing. <sighs> Just got to put the, the lo-fi music on. And then we'll be good to go and start coding. Uh, today, I'm implementing the neat algorithm from scratch in Python. Uh, or that's the plan, anyways. I'm participating in the Global Hack Week Hackathon uh, this month, so the December one. Starting today, ends in a week. My plan is to make another artificial life simulation, similar to the one I was working on previous to this one. Um, but instead of taking place on an island and having smooth movement, instead, the creatures will be living in a similar environment to uh, to Conway's Game of Life, where it's just a grid of cells. Cells can either be on or off. Creature Creatures can be located in this environment. Basically, combination of Lenya, which is also very cool. If you don't know what Lenya is, go check it out. So a combination of Lenya, Conway's Game of Life, and the Life Engine, which is Another thing that if you don't know what it is, go check it out, because it's also very cool. All right, music. It should be good. Great. So. I don't fully remember how I had implemented the neat algorithm in my last project. So instead of starting from scratch completely and wasting a bunch of time, I am going to look at my old project and see how I did things there. Because I'm still going to have to recode everything in Python. Source code. Right, okay. So, here's the old version. Is there any way I can just peer into here? No, okay. Gotta download it. Downloads, ecosystem build, extract all. I have to delete all of this right after. I just need to know how I programmed the, uh, I need to know how I programmed specifically the neat algorithm stuff, which is independent from the rest of the project, actually. All right, I can delete the zipped file. Ecosystem build. There's a thumbnail for this stream. Ecosystem build. Look at that. Don't need any of this. Don't need any of those. Tile maps gone. Scenes and prefabs gone. Scripts, neat. So I had a gene. Gene, okay. Let me open these up. And I forget how to do object-oriented programming in Python, so we'll see how that goes. Gonna have to look some stuff up. I 
love waiting for loading bars. Close this. So I'm guessing this is a parent, and then these two derive from gene, I'm assuming. And then there's connection and node as well. Okay, I believe the gene is the most basic unit, so let's start with that one. Uh, if it doesn't crash. Yeah, gene just has an innovation number called the gene. Constructor takes an innovation number or just nothing. Okay. Let's see if I can remember how to do this in Python. So if I gene.py public class capital and no capital. No capital? Yeah, Python. Okay. Public is not defined. Is it just class? Class gene self innovation number. And I think I can cast this. Do I remember how to do this? Int. There we go, nice. Oh wait. No, okay, I need those in a define init self innovation number. There we go. I remember now. Okay. That's an int. So now self dot, no, I don't need to initialize self, but I can do self dot innovation number equals innovation number, right? No, okay. Do I, can I do that? Yes, okay. Let's put a space there. Can you override? Just a thing in Python. I forgot its name. Um, polymorphism. I think that's it for the gene class. That's it. All right. Next, let's do the node gene. Node gene derives from gene x and y position, and a constructor with which just innovation number. Okay can do that oh wait actually I cannot do that because I don't know how to derive things in Python let me move that into genes what was it called no gene yeah no gene um, class node gene Do I just gene? How to inherit a class in Python. W3S, W3 school. I love this website. Oh, you just put it in parentheses. Okay. Do I need to import it though? Because they're not in the same script. What if I did just put all of the gene stuff in the same script? Because I think... I 
guessing that doesn't actually work. Yeah, gene is not defined. Gene.py. From gene import gene. Okay. Class no gene. What's this one? Um, okay. Define init. Yes. Self X and Y. Um, self dot X equals X. Is there such a thing as it float hmm. yeah I'm sure that's fine right to call an innovation number Oh wait, how does this work? These aren't in the constructor. They're just there. Can I just do this? Remove those. Base, no, okay. How to call parent instructor in Python. Yeah, super constructor. Super dot in it, and then I can pass in the innovation. Okay. I think that's good. So if I just say super dot in it, innovation number. I think that's everything there. Okay, no gene. Connection gene. Okay, this one has more. Not too much though. Okay. New file. Connection gene.py. Class connection. Gene derives from gene, so I need to import it uh, from gene import gene. Yep, cool. Um, Wait enabled and two no genes. And can I specify that these need to be no genes? Oh, not in there. Okay. 
Okay, so there's a few values here. Let's start with the constructors. Self dot from node equals from node, and let's specify no gene. I think I can do that. No, it doesn't change anything. Okay. Right. Self dot two node equals two node. So weight and an enabled. So self dot weight equals. I can just define it. I think float and then bool self dot enabled. Right, all of these connection genes are done. The gene, no gene, connection gene. This doesn't have any kind of innovation number. No, okay. No gene, gene. No gene, I guess the next step now is the genome. Oh, okay, to code the genome, I need the neat class, so let's and look at the neat class. Okay, list of connection gene, no gene of both of those. Yep. Yeah, okay. Next step is the neat class. Let's do that. Let's quickly rename this folder to neat. Name neat. New file, neat.py, class neat, define init, self, input size, output size, clients. I'm probably gonna have to modify this actually. I'll code it up for now, but I want the creatures to have the ability to develop new inputs and new outputs. So I'm going to have to modify this eventually to allow them to do that. But for now it's fine. Just want to get the base system in, I guess. What's the reset? Okay, there's a few methods here. Um, let's just quickly define all of them. Define. Oh, wait. Genome needs the need class, but the need class needs the genome, so we'll have to do something while I wait. Uh, define. Genome pass, and actually, it's a method, so I'm not 100% sure what all of the like styling rules are for Python, but I'll just make them up as I go. Define underscore reset. Why is this static? Okay, 
and then we polymorph this method with I think this just creates a new node. Okay. Right, yes, okay. That does make sense. We're good. So, there's a reset. There is a define underscore get underscore connection. Then I need to duplicate this. that define underscore get underscore node pass define underscore get underscore node pass okay There's three variables, all integers, int, input size, self dot input size. Yes, okay. Int self dot output underscore size. Is that how I've been doing it? Yes. These should be styled differently. Int self dot max clients i don't remember exactly what that does that's the maximum number of clients but i think in this project i don't actually end up using it because it's based on pure natural selection there's no fitness or anything and i'm gonna do the same thing here so i'm probably not actually going to need this variable but i will leave it in for now um self dot okay let's import some stuff from connection gene import connection gene self dot all underscore connections equals an array how that works I don't actually use Python that often is there a difference between a list and an array in Python Okay, yeah, 
I'm using an array. And I think I can change how to change size of array in Python. I can't do like yeah it doesn't do anything okay C1, C2, and C3. Those are for the uh, crossover and difference methods later. Once all of that is done, then I call underscore reset. Or do I need to put self dot? There we go. Then I can pass in self dot Styling on this max clients. Okay. How does the reset method? Do I need? I'm gonna need a genome for this. I think. I'm going to need at least. No, I'm just going to need the genome class and maybe the constructor. Is there a constructor in genome? Constructor. It just passes in neat. Okay. Reset takes in Yep. I have no clue how this works. I'm kind of guessing and we'll see we'll see when I run it what happens. Um, C 
self dot all connections dot clear self dot all nodes dot clear Get node returns it as well. Okay. Now make a for loop. Nope, that's not what I wanted. For. How do you just How do you just define like loop through this X number of times? For I in oh okay. Yes, I remember. There we go. Do I have no gene? I do not. From no gene, import no gene, no gene n equals self dot underscore get node. dot okay I'm probably let's write these methods here and equals new no gene self dot dot append n can I do is that how this works in Python just return I think let's, let's just remove this one for never mind I'll add it back um self and then ID If yeah, ID is smaller or equal to, so I need to do self dot all nodes dot count. Return self dot. all underscore nodes id minus one i don't actually need these curly brackets 
and the, if this is not the case, then instead return self dot get node self. Wait, do I need to pass in anything for that? No, I think we're good. So if I just n equals self dot get node and then where's the error? Where is the error? To have this back to oh there we go okay get node get node and the node gene has yep x n dot x equals zero point one f which is zero point yeah zero point one and dot y equals i plus one divided by self dot input size plus one it's just the position of so basically this reset function just creates a new a new genome. So it's creating new nodes and then setting the position of each node accordingly to make sure everything is working fine. So then later on when we implement the calculator class, we can just check the position of the node to make sure that we're not creating an infinite cycle. And now I need to do the exact same thing that I did right here, but for output instead. Yeah, so we're just creating the input and output nodes. Output size, output size, and this should be 0 0.9 instead. Next up is the connection gene stuff. So self and then connection C equals connection gene. I think I have that imported. Yep. connection dot from connection dot to and I think it's yeah from node dot to node I think is what it is yep from node to node go back to neat from node to node C dot innovation is that right? And Gene is it 
No, it's called innovation underscore number. I have a strong feeling a large portion of this is not going to work once I actually get it to run, but might as well try. And then if it doesn't work, so what? C dot wait equals connection dot wait C dot enabled equals connection dot enabled and then return C. So I don't think I actually need self there. No, I don't. Nice. I get connection node one, node two. So I'm guessing this just finds the connect. Yeah, this finds the connection between two nodes. I just pass in two nodes and it figures out whether there's a connection there or not. I'm already tired. It's only what? 315. I'm going to shine the light into my eyes in order to keep myself awake. Perfect. Okay. Uh, node one and node two. C equals connection gene. Just pass in both of those. And that just creates a new gene. Yep. Okay. And then if self dot oh, I need self here. Dot all underscore self dot all connections dot contains um, C C dot innovation number equals self dot all connections all connections dot in oh Dot index dot index values index find index of an object in array Python. I know how to write this in script, but I want to check if there is just a method. Warner has subscribed. Hello. How's it going?
Okay. So, thank you for subscribing. Let's see. I believe the index method is what I'm looking for. I think if I just... Um, is it here? Dot, yeah, dot index. And then if I pass in C, I believe... Hello, how's it going? Uh, I believe then, then I need to find that innovation number. Okay, that was a little bit convoluted and I really hope it works. Let's add an else statement here. Um, what am I doing? Right, if it's not there, then c dot innovation number equals self dot all connections dot count plus one. And then all nope self dot all connections dot append c. Remove pass. And then we return, return C. This is good. I'm glad you're doing fine. Um, yes, okay. Last method in the neat class is the genome, empty genome method but I don't have a genome class yet. So I'm just going to put a comment here, get back to this eventually. And then once I'm done coding the genome class, I'm going done. Uh, do I want to be done? Am I going to wait until I'm done? <sighs> yeah, okay. I'll go through and code the genome class. And then once the genome class is programmed, I'm going to go through and comment on all the different scripts. And then if there's anything I don't understand, I'll go back and look through everything. So, genome.py class genome. Put that in there. Gary, are you participating in the, um, what's it called? Global Hack Week. Or are you just stopping by? Um, define. self dot neat was neat um, then I need to make two more lists self dot not participating fair enough is an empty array self dot nodes equals get an empty array and I think that's everything for the constructor I forgot how big these methods were Gotta do it though. All right. Let me actually bring up the, uh, I got drawn in the title. Why artificial life? Okay, artificial life. I am 
right now I'm coding a I am coding the neat algorithm in, from scratch in Python and then afterwards I'm going to use the neat algorithm to make some kind of artificial life similar to I don't know if you know about um, not equal AI. Yes. So eventually, so right now I'm building the artificial intelligence that will go behind the artificial life. I'm not sure if you know about the life engine. Let me look it up actually, in case you don't. So the life engine. where there's a bunch of little creatures that live on a grid and they do stuff. I wanted to show off something. So each one of these like groups of pixels is a different creature. The green is just food. Creatures are moving around and gathering food. Each one of them has a neural network. So right now I'm coding the neural network part. So there's not much to see, but probably tomorrow or the day after because I'm doing a week-long hackathon right now. So probably a few days from now, then I'll have something to actually look at that's interesting to watch and seeing creatures running around gathering food. Another example of what I, another example is called Lenia. Again, not sure if you know about Lenia. It's a, Lenya is a convolutional cellular automata, which, so as you can see again, has a bunch of pixels. This is a creature living in the, in that space. Um, I need to read up a bit more on Lenya because I believe it is purely a convolutional cellular automata. Yeah, evolution, exactly. With, uh, yes, so. Yes, the life engine generates the creatures based on evolution. They have like random mutation chances and they can just, creatures can add a new pixel that does something or they'll evolve a new behavior based on random mutation. Uh, before this project, I was working on something else. Let me bring up, open up my Twitter. Yes, I have a few tweets there. So before this, I was working on another artificial life kind of thing based on evolution and natural selection. Yeah, here. So each one of these creatures has a neural network and they're all competing to gather food and evolve and just get better that is the sentient probably not not this version that i'm currently working on but eventually it is it's a goal that i'd like to attain at some point to create some kind of sentient artificial life but at the moment that is very far-fetched right I was bringing up the research paper neat So basically, what I'm about to do here. Oh, is it not on the Wikipedia page? Mm, okay. Sorry, one. 
Also not the right paper. Thank you. Where is it? I'm looking for the original research paper. Is this it? Yeah, okay. Let's see. I'm glad. I'm glad. That is yes. Yeah, it's very I very interested in this topic, which is why I'm decided to do it for the hackathon I'm doing. That's the genome. Where's the distance function? Those are the different mutations. Just need to find the distance function. Here it is. So basically, all of this code here is doing this. And what this does is that it compares how different two neural networks are. So it compares, um, it compares the number of excess genes or different genes and then averages them out and then compares the difference in the weights. And then that will give you the, that'll give you the distance between the two. But it's time to code this all. So, actually, I'll do the same thing where I'll define all the methods and then I'll go through and code them. So, I need a, before I do that though, something I could do is just finish the neat class here. Now that I have genomes. From genome, import genome. And here, and with that, G equals genome self. Is that not something I can do? This, can I do that? Self dot this. Oh wait, I need to self neat. Okay, I think that's good. For I in range self dot input size plus self dot Output size. G dot underscore. Wait. G dot nodes dot append and then we can self dot underscore get node I plus one and then return G and that will initialize an empty genome. It's time to code the genome. So let's go through, define underscore distance, self, s, 
to find. I think next one is the crossover method. Yep. Underscore cross underscore over self. Pass. Next. Define underscore mutate self s. This was specific to the Unity project, so I can actually delete that. Don't need it. And then there's all the different mutations that I need to implement. Underscore mutate link self. Yes. These are all the different ways in which a genome can mutate during the evolution process. So I'll explain all of them once I actually go through and implement them. Define mutate weight shift self s. Yes. Mutate weight underscore random self pass define mutate underscore link underscore toggle self and pass. Okay. Those are all the different mutations. And there's two things down here to just get random stuff. Underscore get random connection. And then get underscore random underscore node. Okay, still got a lot to do. That's the crossover method. Distance takes in a genome. Call it genome two. Genome one equals self. Let's do that. I sort things? Yeah, I did. That might be a little bit of a problem. Sort an array Python. I need to find the highest int highest underscore innovation underscore gene underscore one. If genome one dot 
connections dot count is not equal to one. Then we want then we want to sort it so. Sort. If a key function is given, apply it once to each list item and sort them. What's a key function? How does this work? Key function Python sort. So I need to sort the list from lowest to highest innovation number, I think. Let's see. Yeah, so I need the highest innovation number to be at the bottom of the list. So I think I just need to make a method inside the genome class and just called like uh, underscore get underscore innovation underscore number take an element return element dot connection dot innovation number and then I can just sort it okay let's try that Need a bit more water first, though. This music is so calming. I'm falling asleep. This is a problem. It's too calming. Uh, what can I replace it with? Um, let's see. I hope you all like Doom music. Just 
try to find the right one. Okay. Back to coding. Screen two. Okay. Yes. So I need to make a get. Yeah. I need a find get. Innovation number. And that just returns. Needs an element. Side tab that so I can see it while I'm coding. Let's call it connection. Connection. Turn. Is it connection? Yes. Connection dot innovation number. Okay, get rid of this pass. I don't actually need the self here. So now if I do sort key equals underscore get innovation number. Pretty sure it is. Does it need to be defined above? What does it mean when it's saying it's not defined? Because it definitely is. Do I need to put this get innovation number inside the connection gene class? That wasn't it. Why are you saying it's undefined?
No, that's not the same error. I think that does the same thing. Okay. Now that it is sorted by the innovation number. I can do... Let's actually quickly hide the sidebar. Don't need it. I thought I was able to hide this. Oh, nice. that next is highest innovation number gene one equals genome one dot connections dot connections dot count minus one dot Innovation number. And then I can do the same right under it for genome two. Now that we know what the highest innovation number for each genome is, now I just need to make sure the one with the highest innovation number is genome 1, and the one with the lower innovation number is genome 2. So if highest innovation gene 1 is smaller than the highest innovation gene 2, then G equals G1, genome 1. Genome 1 equals genome 2, and genome 2 equals G. I'll just call this temp. Okay. You can't just shoot a hole into the surface of Mars. Define two indexes. Index underscore genome. Actually, I'll do genome. Genome underscore one underscore index. Genome. 
gnome underscore two underscore index. Set both of these to zero. Then we need to count the number of disjoint excess, disjoint and excess genes. So we'll make two more variables. Each disjoint, name it fully, number of disjoint genes equals zero. Int number of excess. Zero. Okay, then I need a float average underscore weight difference. And int number of similar genes. I think that's what that one is. I definitely feel more awake now that I'm listening to Doom music while coding. Brain juices are flowing faster. sure if it was genome one index smaller than genome one dot count I'm actually realizing that it should be like this And okay. Genome two index is smaller than that I find right here. What do you mean? so confused as to why it doesn't think they're initialized. Okay. Now what? Both of those are connected. Int innovation 
one equals gene one dot innovation number equals gene two dot innovation number if innovation one equals equals innovation two they are the same so the number of similar genes increases Let's see. Oh, is that why? That's a little annoying. Okay. Actually, do I need to? Yeah, I do. Okay. So, plus equals one. Why didn't this one do that, though? I'm confused. How does Python work again? Why is this one fine, but not this one? I don't understand what's happening. But I also don't want to just load my script with self dot. What happens if I Thanks, Doom. This piece of code might break me soon enough, though. Okay. I guess I will just add a bunch of self dot statements. And just. Effect. Wait a minute. Against all odds, Wait, no. Yeah. There is a neat. There is a neat library for Python, but I'm making modifications to the system afterwards, so. I can't actually use the library because I need to go into the code and make modifications. See, that one's fine now. What if I just... Genome one underscore index equals zero. Now that one's happy. 
Wait, am I supposed to... Oh, I'm a little stupid. Okay. Hang on, let me just quickly double check that. How to specify very level type in Python. Oh, that's not what I'm doing. Equals int zero. Okay. And I think then I can just Remove these. Let's see. Or I can. I'll add them back here, just for my own sake, so I know. Int. All of these reset to zero. It says it's unbound, and it says it's any variable. That, okay, cool. Um, back to coding. So, number of similar genes is increased if gene one dot weight is greater than two dot weight average weight difference plus equals Gene one dot weight minus gene two dot weight. And do that again, but with gene two instead. Index plus equals two. So that's if innovation and innovation are the same. Otherwise, otherwise, if innovation. One 
is greater than innovation two. The number of disjoint genes increases by one. This equals one. And innovation two plus equals one. If same thing again, but swapped out. Average weight difference divided by number of similar genes. Then number of disjoint genes. No, it's excess genes. Plus equals genome one dot connections dot count minus genome one underscore index. And now we calculate it. Now that we have all the numbers, we just plug it into the formula. So N equals. Oh wait, no, that's just N. Okay. It's not actually, is it necessary? Yeah, genome one dot connections dot count. I don't actually know why I do math f math dot max because genome one's the one who's going to have the most connections. Yeah. Yeah, genome one has the most connections, so I don't know why I do that. If n is smaller than twenty n equals one. All right, now we plug everything into the formula. So we return self dot neat dot c1 times number of disjoint genes divided by n. Plus plus self dot neat dot c two times number of excess genes. Some more parentheses plus neat nope self dot neat dot c3 times average weight difference let's put that in parentheses and i th think that's everything so let's quickly add a few line breaks Never mind, apparently I can't do that.
Okay, that's the <laughs> distance function completed. God, it's so... I forgot how... I was about to say something. Never mind. <laughs> I forgot how long this function was. Okay, next method. Crossover method. Still long, but not as long. And I need genome one and genome two. Genome one, genome two. Neat equals genome one dot neat. Yo, my shadow, it's there. Very cool. Good to know. Yes. Back to coding. I got di I got distracted. No. So gets the neat algorithm at the neat class. Child genome equals neat dot underscore empty genome. Genome one underscore index equals int zero. We're doing this again. <laughs> Actually, I should just be able to. Yeah, I can actually copy the majority of this. Copy. Here, and let's get rid of the functionality I don't need. So, don't need any of these. It's just the child genome, the indexes. Okay, we got the connections, get the genes, get the innovation numbers, and then that's about it. That's the same. Let's add pass and pass. Okay. Um, so I need a fifty percent chance of doing one gene and a 50% chance of doing the other gene. So how do I do that? Okay, random seems to give number between zero and one, which is perfect. From random, import random, and then here, should be able to just, if random is 
greater than 0 0.5. And I can do child genome dot connections dot append. Neat dot underscore get underscore connection gene one. Else, I think it's just the same thing, but instead it's gene two. Yep. And then increment both indexes. this and this yep the longer the icon of sin is on earth the stronger he will become and there's a second while loop Like that. Okay, what does this one do? Oh, it just adds all the excess genes afterwards. Okay. While genome one underscore index is smaller than genome one dot dot connections dot count and your will, better soul. You remain. gene one equals genome nice and then child underscore genome dot Connections dot append need dot get connection. Yup. And then genome one index plus equals one. Connection gene gene in child gene. Oh, and then it adds. Okay. So that was for all the connections. Oh, my light just went out. Can I turn it back on? Does this have like a sleep time? Did I? What happened? Why did you go out? It was unplugged. Okay, yeah, then for each, uh, oh, that's not a thing in Python. For gene in child genome dot connections, child genome dot nodes dot append gene dot from node there's a keyboard shortcut to just you know oh, I have four cursors now yo 
How did I do that? Nice. Is it shift alt? Yeah, there we go. Child genes dot append to node. So then you return child genome. Okay, that's the crossover method done. Now we have the mutate methods. Yay. Okay, basically mutate method is easy. It's all of these that are going to be slightly more difficult. Mutate rate shift, weight randomly, toggle random connection. Okay, yes. So the mutate method itself, I'm going to pass in a mutation underscore chance. Then for each mutate method, I'm just going to add if random is smaller than mutation chance. And then there's five types of mutations. So I just one, two, three, four, five. Then here, underscore mutate underscore link. And this one, underscore mutate underscore node. underscore mutate mutate underscore await underscore shift mutate underscore await underscore random Why are all of these undefined? Again, I don't think I need to define these on before it, right? Do I? Still not it. Okay, one second. Let's slowly undo here. Because right now, Never mind. Okay, I just got rid of a bunch of work for nothing. Okay, it's not too bad though. Underscore mutate weight shift. Mutate a random weight, mutate underscore random underscore node. Okay, now why aren't these happy? You problem. <laughs> I 
Ah, yes, I remember. Self. That's what I'm doing wrong. Oh, wait. No, never mind. There we go. Now it's happy. Time to go through each one of these and do each one individually. I only have 30 more minutes for this stream before I'm going to have to end the stream. But I should be able to get everything done in time if I hurry up. Okay, I gotta stop just highlighting the code. Uh, what are, I need each one of these as well to be implemented. Right, yes, okay. Index equals, yep, exactly that. Zero, and then we return. Genes index. So I don't actually need this. And these two are actually exactly the same, so I can just all this get random gene. Okay. Mutate link for Okay, this one is just Alright, I in range 100, basically what that does is just we'll, we'll try to find a valid connection 100 times and if we can't find it, then we'll just accept that there isn't a valid connection to be made. Okay, A equals get oh, underscore get underscore random gene self dot nodes is that in here yes not defined what do you mean ah, self dot I will be right back Alrighty, sadly I will have to end the stream a little bit early. Uh, I will pick pick it right back up tomorrow. So if you want to stop by tomorrow as well, I will see you then. So, yes, got a decent amount done today. Got the bare bones fundamentals in. Need to finish the mutations, and then and then after all the mutations are implemented. It is a simple matter of creating the calculator class, which shouldn't be too hard either. Neat. Yeah, so this is done, that's done, this is done, that's done, and this is almost done, and I probably won't actually need the species. And then 
tomorrow I'll do the calculator and these two scripts, but those are fairly easy scripts to make. So we should be done fairly soon, and then we can actually start working on the environment and the creatures themselves. And then I need to try it. I'm currently trying to get in touch with the creators of the NEAT algorithm, actually. So I'm going to ask them a few questions about how to go about making a NEAT algorithm with a mutable number of inputs. Because I have a slight intuition as to how I might go about doing that. But I think getting their feedback as well would be good. But I will see you all tomorrow. I hope you all have a good evening. See you soon.